What the fuck is you thinking? Better yet, where the fuck is you going? Get back to no star mapping out here, nobody knowing. Time flying and you figure you fly right along with it. Not hearing no warnings in the morning, you go get it. Like Buster Throttle, play that out. Move a half a moon around the galaxy, you play that down. I can do Ronald Reagan. This is my favorite Mac Dre album, but they're all amazing. I'm in the building and I'm feeling myself. I'm feeling myself. I'm in the building and I'm feeling myself. I'm feeling myself. She's in the building and she's feeling herself. She's looking bad, but I'm willing to help. This one came out actually, I think, right after uh, he was killed, but feels like one that they finished and just sort of hadn't gotten to yet. This is 2004, like, you know, the hyphy movement in the Bay Area, and which sort of like permeated down here too, was like, um, unlike anything else I have experienced before or since, there was like the kind of like coalescing of a, of a scene around local music celebrities was amazing. This stuff is actually like pretty expensive sounding and like kind of pristine in relation to all of that stuff. He was definitely one of the best people doing really, it. Really, really, a lot of really funny pun band, like album names. Like yeah. Mac Malls, uh, my oh, favorite yeah. is Fiziana Shroom. Fiziana Stone, Stone in the Temple, in of, the Shrooms. Temple of Shrooms. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, <laughs> and the, and the, the so. dual album between them that came out, the tennis themed album, oh, where they were Andre Macassey and, and Mal McEnroe. Mal McEnroe, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is one of my favorite, most sort of influential kind of mind-changing albums. It's Trance by Michael Gordon. It was given to me by a, by a friend who described it, he's like, this is the music Philip Glass would be making if he were like young and hip again, like if he were young and cool all of a sudden again. It's super kind of angular and jagged, but has the same kind of trance-like kind of quality of Philip Glass, but it's not nearly as like consonant and pretty. If we're talking about classical music, this is my favorite composer in the world, uh, Michael Pissarro. <laughs> This is a piece he wrote for percussion and piano. My friend Greg Stewart uh, plays the percussion on it. This is, uh, well, if we're talking about sort of classical stuff, I'm a huge Dee Dee Bridgewater fan. This is actually her newest album, which is um, a bunch of like New Orleans jazz standards. <laughs> One of my favorite singers of all time, and I, I love all of her albums. Her range on this one is crazy too. There's stuff that is like very straight ahead, and there's there's like these huge sort of like scat solos that are just incredibly impressive, and it's all really fun but really technical. I got something jazzy. I got this Joe McPhee and Dominic Duvall. <laughs> They're in a, a group called Trio X together. Dominic Duvall just sadly passed away uh, like two weeks ago, maybe. So um, I figured I would check this out, sort of in memory of Dominic Duvall. I'm sure it's great. They're both such killer players. The only remotely jazzy thing I picked up uh, <laughs> is this Piero Miliani record, who I'm a big fan of. this wave of like synth wave reissues and old like Italian film score reissues that's happening right now. I th the Piero Emiliani stuff is finally getting picked up. His probably biggest claim to fame is that he wrote Menomina, that song that was used <laughs> by the Muppets, which was for like some weird piece of uh, Italian erotica. <laughs> The unusually experimental section of Amoeba Berkeley is like the source of most of my music taste uh, growing up. 
you guys have the underneath the experimental section, there's an experimental clearance section, which uh, often has fantastic little gems of like a weird CDR, like this one by Dakota Hogback, who, uh, who's, yeah. a, who's a really good harsh noise musician. <laughs> This is actually great. I used to have this. I haven't seen it in a while, so I'm gonna rebuy it because it's only a buck. Howard Stelzer and Jason Talbot. Fun, lightning fast, like trade-off tape manipulation uh, improvised. And then this $3 Lionel Marchetti. Lionel Marchetti is like a sort of contemporary music concrete guy. Uh, and all of his stuff is really strong. I have more music concrete all around it from the, the classier upper <laughs> upper bins <laughs> of the clearance. Uh, these are a little more expensive, but uh, this just happens to be the one that you guys have right now of the, the Recollection GRM series. Uh, it's by Jean Schwartz, who I don't know too much about, but it's sort of early computer music. And then this series of reissues is really cool too that I actually haven't picked up any of, but I meant to get this Joan LaBarbera. Maybe her first record, Voice is the Original Instrument which I've never heard and I've always kind of wanted to, but it's hard to track down. Oh, yeah, so we can get through all of the stuff of that sort of <laughs> sure. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. area. This is wonderful. Oh, this uh, Paulina Oliveros collection of her electronic music from, what, 61 to 70? <laughs> of the like the synth stuff and the tape feedback stuff from that time, which is my absolute favorite uh, music of hers and some of my favorite music on the planet. There's a chapter in my PhD dissertation about one of these pieces that's called um, The Day I Disconnected the Erase Head and Forgot to Reconnect It. Which is about her getting yelled at by the asshole that ran the Tape Music Center in Toronto that she was working in who yelled at her for messing with her, with his equipment. And <laughs> he said that she wasn't allowed to use certain things. It was like black magic when she touched it. Um, <laughs> These are both great. This is one of the reasons I make rap music. just obsessed with this album when we were kids. There's still not really anything like this. I mean, like, I know, yeah. improvisational, like, super jazzy, but incredible storytelling and these, like, really, like, solid hooks. This is just, like, a really carefully made rap jazz album. Um, and then this is Field Mob's third album. So don't listen to that vinyl of grapes there. Nothing but liars hating a bit. They wouldn't mind trading places with you by my side in my Mercedes. But the thing about Field Mob is that they're really good rappers. Oh, they're excellent. Yeah, they're like they're super fantastic. like technically good rappers. They're really like a lot of fun. And like musically, the stuff is super funky and super good. I was just gonna very quickly, I'm, I won't have to talk about any of them, but uh, uh, in any sort of depth, but this is a, a Shredded Nerve record. <laughs> This is a pedestrian deposit record. This is a Puce Mary record. I mean, you would call it noise or maybe power electronics, but it's um, 
It's the sort of underground version or the, the sort of homemade music concrete we were talking about earlier, but with this sort of creepy horror movie noise vibe to it all. Like it's very, very precise. I'm a, also a film music composer by day sometimes. It's a pretty exciting time to be collecting film music because there's labels like Waxwork who did one of my scores as well, but are doing these great reissues. I'm super excited that they did this Altered State score by John Corgliano. One of the great like, real composers who also dabbled in film, and this is like really one of the best scores of all time. My favorite Ennio Morricone score has come out, which is all choir and like bass and guitar, and it's like all these sort of funky disco versions of Dies Irae. <laughs> This is one of the weirdest ones. I won't pre pretend to know how to pronounce the name in Italian, <laughs> and I've never seen this movie, but this is the best Ennio Morricone score. <laughs> this is the one, like I've done a lot of digging and this is my favorite. And then my favorite, uh, probably contemporary composer is Brian Reitzel right now, who did uh, Hannibal. could have grabbed any of these. There's a lot of volumes. All of this music has come out. The best television music probably that's ever been written. Probably my favorite Jerry Goldsmith score that has not been reissued that I'm aware of. Under Fire, this movie with Nick Nolte. This is probably my favorite Jerry Goldsmith score. The theme from it. Um, this weird little sort of rolling thing in 5-8 with this guitar solo by Pat Metheny. It's really some of the more interesting music he wrote. He was really good at like a lot of ethnographic research and really sort of setting things like on the proper instruments for the place of the movie and this is really one of the best examples of that. And it was sampled in one of our favorite Cameron songs. Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Get out the way cause I move bricks, get out the gate. This is a great, great, great score that should get a reissue in the way that everything else is right now. <laughs> and it's only $2.99 here. Yeah. I have multiple copies of it already. <laughs> well, thanks guys. Really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Voila! Pulling rabbit food out of Parker. Parker. Carrots catch the light right up the block from the farmer. He got that lettuce, lettuce, that cabbage, cabbage, that broccoli. Trying to catch a fire. Locks like Marley. Wow. That Chevy frame rattling like... Amoeba!